Low Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for another Orc Mode workout, and today was Dynamic Effort Bench Press Day. And a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please click like down below. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. Um, in keeping with the trend, you guys are going to see some adjustments moving forward with this training. Um, again, trying to do as much GPP and stuff as possible on my off days, doing all the mini workouts. And so what I'm doing with a lot of this, you guys are going to notice I'm not really doing much in the way of single joint stuff. The reason for that is I can get tons of single joint band work as recovery. So if I have muscles that need the extra work, things like triceps, biceps, possibly rear delts, any of that, I can do band work for that. Same thing even the hamstrings and stuff. I've started learning on my restoration days yesterday to hook bands to, to it. So I'm actually doing banded work. So with only something like 90 pounds of plates with band tension for really high reps. Uh, so stuff like that. So what I'm gonna be doing is avoiding extensions and curls and stuff for now, because I'm gonna be doing so much pulling and pushing on the, the main days that I'm going to just do it all with band work again, which I've done some in the past. And I feel like that's going to be best for my tendons. Because the high rep band work tends to build tendons, tends to build blood flow, build work capacity. So I can do all my arm work with just bands, and I can do those almost every day. Because they don't really beat you up the same. So that I can say for things like triceps, it's like, well, why don't I do stuff like closed grip board presses? Closed grip presses against chains, things like that. That's going to really, really build tricep strength on my pressing and benching. Um, without putting stress on the tendons to the same degree. The speed bench went good for those curious eight sets today. Eight sets. Because of bands, and this is the second week in the wave. And I'm hoping... Well, I don't want to jinx anything. We'll see if I have my, my new rack set up assembled by tomorrow. If we do, we can probably get the wave in with, with speed pulls with bands. Because I want to be able to do bands off the, off the bottom. But these went good, nice and fast. I've been working on the arch and the setup a lot more. Uh, building a better arch is something that I need to do. Shoulder health, maximum weight, everything else. And so we're going to be practicing a lot of stuff with arching. So a lot of my pressing, other than floor pressing, I'm not going to mess with stuff like dips and other stuff. It's just going to be stuff where I can practice my arch and my setup. Speed bench helps with that, but then all the close grip pressing. And what I'm going to do, we're going to rotate through bars. Rotate through bars, bands, chains on all my lifts. I already know, historically, we've gone through. We know what exercises build my big lifts, and we know which ones are tied to my weakest links on all my, my lift variations. I need to hammer all those movements, but I need to be able to rotate them. Okay. And also, I'm going to do something a little bit different with my max effort stuff. I'm going to do something a little unconventional that has still been messed with at West Side. Louie has said, hey, this can work for guys with the right GPP, people with high enough work capacity. And anyone who follows them closely knows what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do without me saying it based on what I just said. But we're going to mess with the lifts that we, we know work. So in this case, though, also, we do the three different bench whips. That was me tripping over the cord plugged into the camera to keep it charging all the time. I did a third of these wide, third medium, a third close. Now because I'm doing even numbers, they aren't really divisible by three. This is eight sets, so it was two wide, three medium, sorry, four medium, <laughs> two close. So we're, we're dividing it up and getting narrower as we go, because I tend to be a little more explosive the narrower I get. But it wasn't bad early on. We're getting better speed. We're getting better speed. Okay. It needs a lot more work. But I'm working on being more explosive and violent and stuff in general. A lot of my lifts, we're going to be doing a lot of that. Hey, I know that's something I need to do on sumos to even get tighter, for example. I'm too loose on a sumo. It's because I'm not aggressively pulling myself into the setup. Hey. So we've got to be more violent with the speed work. Something I tell clients all the time. So again, getting that tightness in. Uh, but the speed work today, speed benching went good. Happy with all of it. Happy with all of it. It always has room to improve. But we are improving. And I'm going to build the bench back up. We know the shoulders detrained. And, and I'm surprised I actually had people ask 
this week what shoulder injury I missed all of that it's like oh my god we've been talking about it for nine weeks straight actually ten weeks at this point I hit my bench PR you know the 352 close grip and then pull-ups hurt me so anyone who said I've already had people try to say oh this is a bad example of you you've had an injury there but my injury is not related to any of my main training and it's not related to heavy lifting I got injured with light weight on a supplemental lift on an exercise that, that I was trying to find a way to do that it aggravated another condition I had that I was trying to find a way to do that was safe and it just doesn't work for me and that's pull-ups I used to be really good at pull-ups but we've continued to work on shoulder mobility since then um, work on shoulder muscle balance to alleviate that but I'll probably never go back to that so these were hard this was tricep death today and I think that's the way I'm gonna go we're gonna put a little more tricep focus on speed days and a little more pec focus on main days and that's just gonna be depend on what bars and variations I use it's still gonna be floor pressing and close grip pressing but we can rotate stuff to, to make this work now people will say well why this this bar today weren't you making decent progress with the straight bar I was I was. We got to 235 for sets of 10, but we struggled on the last the last rep. But I want to work other stuff in. We need to avoid acclimating. We need to avoid overuse. And we need to hit all the angles because I'm not going to do much variation in terms of the movements. It's going to be floor pressing. It's going to be close grip pressing. It's going to be overhead pressing. We'll use the tools that I have to create variation to avoid overuse accommodation and to make sure that we hit all the angles. Floor pressing really worked wonders for my, my benching. Oh, and by the way, I mean, I, the same thing came in. I actually had people come in and say, oh my God, you only lift 300 pounds on, on my bench the other day. And you've been hurt. Oh, and it's like, what ridiculousness. Look at what I squat and deadlift. Let's not pretend, let's not pretend I'm not ridiculously strong. Not just for my age either. For my age, it's next tier up. But in general, come on knock me for my weakest lift after rehabbing an injury yeah except that I had just hit 50 pounds more than that two months ago so we'll build it back we'll build it back and we're doing we'll do it with these lifts because we know these are the ones that carry over and you guys will see what I'm doing with all the shoulder stuff also but what are we going to do for these things well I got different bars for floor pressing I have to, I can mess with, with accommodation. I'd rather not, but I can if I need to. It's all strength, it's all the same movement pattern. So if I have to run reverse bands, we'll do that. If I gotta use chains, we'll do that. Close grip bench, I'm gonna have a lot of stuff. Actually, I've got a, a rackable, sorry, not a rackable, I've got a camber bench bar ordered, by the way. I may not have it too soon, but I've got one. Hey, that's going to give me another dynamic for the even close grip pressing and chest pressing. It's also going to let me do some crazy stuff with deficit deadlifts. That is a multifaceted tool. It's one of the tools I have coming, one of the toys. Um, so again, I'll have days where I do the buffalo bar. Right, we'll use the buffalo bar and the cambered bench bar, which I can use blocks to set it. Like I can use my, my board press blocks, my bench blocks. To make it a smaller deficit on my chest if I need to. We can tune that range of motion. Same thing if I want to be a little more tricep dominant, I'll do what I did today. Wrap the two board. Wrap in the two board with close grip. Again, it lets me practice setting up arching and working my triceps. And this kind of comes with the question of if I'm getting a single joint from all the band push downs, I'm already getting the benefits of a single joint and all the all the tendon health. I mean, realistically, can't we build tricep strength off of close gripping board work? Before people say full range of motion, why well, I'm doing all the other stuff though? We're doing other full range of motion lifts. This will help build me through that part, the sticking points, where my triceps tend to get stuck. And again, keeping in mind, we're doing all that band work for full range of motion. Doing all this other pressing for a full range of motion is fine. I can tune the, the block 
or switch back over to change or do the change with blocks to avoid acclimating and just change it all the time and just do fatiguing sets that are challenging in the rep range I want. Okay, so we're going to build the pecs, triceps, shoulders. But it's all going to be rotating. It's going to be pretty pretty much how conjugates really done. I'm not going to care about progressing on individual lifts like this, except that we'll repeat them. Like if I end up doing two weeks in a row, three weeks in a row on the max day, one of these lifts, but a different variation of the dynamic day, I can track progress separate and try to keep PRing. I mean, we want to make progress. But we also want to avoid overuse because I'm going to be pushing a lot more total work every week. Overuse, recovery, this stuff's going to matter more and more. Okay, we got to get serious now. And we have to think of those things. Now that we've rehabbed a shoulder injury, we come back stronger, better, we learn. Get more well rounded in the strength. But I was happy with those. I know it's not a lot of weight. People are like, well, 225 for, for sets of 10 on the floor press with that bar. That bar really lit my triceps up more. So again, today is going to be a little more tricep dominant. And then, you know, the other day rolls around. I might mess with the straight bar. I might mess with the buffalo bar for it. We'll mess with the buffalo bar probably for the close grip. But like I said, I can throw bands and change over these. Same thing with the rowing. Um, what am I going to do for grip? I'm going to start pin lay rowing every workout, but I'm going to use the axle bar on my deadlift days, squat and deadlift days. That did a lot for my grip in the past. I feel like I don't get as much, quite as much Latin upper back work. Well, we can make up for that by using the straight bar on the other two days. How do we rotate lifts to avoid overuse? If I want to just do pin lay, pin lay, pin lay, what are we going to do about it? Bands and chains. I'll say, what, you can hook bands and chains over pin lay? Yeah, it's a speed strength oriented lift. Look how explosive we are on the pin lay. You bet we can run bands and chains. I have all this equipment. I mean, I've got a pretty ridiculous home gym at this point. Strict press. I um, did this first set. I decided to having messed around with different angles. I feel like I still get really good wrist stacking with wide grip, but why wide grip? I want my pinkies on the, on the rings and so that it will carry over effectively to my bench. And you know what? I had gotten really good at these right before I got that big bench PR. Is this a factor? Possibly. Was it the floor press that did it or the overhead press? I don't know. I think it's a combination. But right now, we know that my delts, because they've detrained, are the weak link in my benching. We can feel it on missed benches. We can see the reduced performance. So we come in light and we build this up. It's going to be sets of 12. That's what I did today. I bumped the weight just a little bit over that. And I know people will be like, Jason, you're doing 105 pounds. Yes. I'm also doing three other presses beforehand. I'm fatigued. And you know what? So a lot of my benching muscles and pressing muscles are very fatigued going into this, but it's still working the shoulders. And here's the thing. I would rather be fatigued so that I'm forced to use a slightly lighter weight to reach the target reps. But we're still working the muscles. We're still working the overhead press, and I need it for the shoulder stability. I need the shoulder strength but we're going to be stricter and for those curious I'm actually locking as hard as I can you notice me pushing through trying to explode working more and more on getting explosive on these control these centric and exploding hard trying to squeeze the bar we'll get better and better at it again okay but again keeping in mind I've done floor press I've done speed benching floor pressing and then close grip board work triceps and stuff are pretty tired but again I felt a lot of shoulder and upper chest stimulation. I noticed that. I noticed I really get a lot of upper chest and side delt with that wider grip. But again, we're being strict. I'm trying to even avoid hip swing and hip movement. And you know, we've got to build these things up and this will help with the upper back because we know I need more upper back in general. We're going to address every element of the upper back. We can do it with pressing, we can do it with rowing, we can do it with high pulls, which are coming up. Oh yeah, baby, high pulls, they're coming back. I feel like my shoulder health is good enough to work on them. We're going to start light. Did that contribute to my bench PR? It works a lot of upper back. And you know what, though? It works. I really liked doing these before. I had to quit, though, due to that shoulder. But this exercise didn't cause it. 
Like this isn't uncomfortable at all. Now these are a little sloppy at first. And yes, I'm gonna start doing them off blocks or, or off of safety straps and everything later because I'm gonna start trying to get heavier on these. Even for a lot of reps, especially with higher reps, I'm gonna to wanna to strap up. I don't wanna to try to pick this up off the floor strapped up. I'm just gonna strap up, pull it up from somewhere high and start doing it because we, we wanna get really strong at these. This will improve all my lifts, right? Yes, we need all the shoulder to have a thicker shoulder girdle. But the explosive element to it, you know, it's going to carry over. So I started really light and did sets of 10. Three sets of 10, we stopped it at three sets. All these lifts, we stopped at three sets of except for rows, which you did four. And I'll figure out how many I can do on the other days. But even then, you, you're talking about 15 to 20 sets of rows will be done every week. Okay? All right? And we'll keep getting proficient at these. They don't look terrible now. At least I'm getting it in the hip crease. They're not perfect. But, you know, we'll work on them. But I felt the whole upper back. My whole shoulder. Entire shoulder girdle. Back my traps are feeling a little crampy. I feel like, man, these hit the, even the upper traps pretty dang hard. I mean, it's a great exercise. It's just you've got to be careful with it. You've got to learn how to do it. Again, a lower technique exercise that gives us the benefits of Olympic lifting, which is that explosiveness. So we need it. You know, I get people who are like, oh, you can't just get fast doing just this or that. It's like, I'm doing multiple things to increase speed. We're doing speed work. I'm doing plyometrics. And now we're going to work these back in. Okay? It's multifaceted. We do need to be more explosive. We need to be more powerful. But we can also use a tool that does both. Helps us build power through the whole body and builds up our shoulders because I need more shoulder. And then I finished up with pendlate rows. And I tried to say strict. I'm doing sets of 15 with this. This isn't a super heavy weight. We know I can do more. I'm trying to stay strict. Why? Easier for recovery. If I'm going to do a ton of rowing, strictness matters. I'm trying to focus on getting that full extension at the bottom, touching the floor, trying to turn my elbows out. And again, it gives, gives you guys an idea of my elbow. Like people will look at that and say, is your elbow locking? Watch my biceps. Watch my elbows. That is my lockout. Okay. That is my arms straight. And it's kind of funny because people will say, well, how does that affect muscle pain? Does it put a high risk of injury? No. We, we tear biceps and things when we try to curl the weight and the bicep is taking it. If your elbow is locked, the bicep is not loading the weight as much anymore. Okay, it's a matter of your joints. Some people's joints don't lock out the same. But we can't go further than the joint locks. So no, it doesn't put you at an extra risk. People have weird ideas about what they, they think the full range of emotion of a muscle is. Well, a joint and a muscle don't have the same range of motion, guys. In fact, your muscles have longer ranges of motion than your joints. If you don't believe me, go have your tendon surgically removed and then see, see what happens. The doctor will be able to stretch and you'll be able to contract the muscle further than the joint moves. Okay, just, just context. Context, guys. But the rows really, really lit everything up. I felt a lot of lat on these, and it let me know, you know, as much as I like the inverted rows, I seem to get a lot more out of the penlay rows. Just got to be careful with how we do them for recovery. But it'll give me a varied tool because I can use bands and chains to get variation in. I'll do the axle bar for extra grip work, and we'll work it all in. Just get all around strong, get all around powerful, get back to setting those PRs. I'm shoring up all my weaknesses. Rebuilding anything that detrained after I was rehabbing the shoulder. Build the weak links and keep getting better. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.